Hey everybody. Um, I'm just coming on here. I know it's late, um, but this is kind of the only time I have to do a live video usually because my kids are asleep. Um, so you're joining me in my room. I just wanted to come on here and do a testimony video to maybe encourage somebody and let y'all get to know me better, I guess. Um, I actually grew up in church. I grew up in the Baptist church. Um, and then I went to a First Assembly of God church. And the thing, it's not true for all of those denominations or anything, but the ones I went to were pretty religious, you know? They, um, things like not dancing, not playing cards, um, things like that. And I got saved whenever I was 12 at a church camp and um, got baptized in 2002. Um, and I did feel different afterwards, but I don't know if it was a good way or not. <laughs> Because nobody really taught me how to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It was more of pray 10 minutes a night and ask him to forgive you for all the bad things you did during the day. <laughs> and that's kind of how I lived for a long time, was just try to be as good of a person as you can be. I didn't cuss didn't watch already movies, didn't, um, didn't do drugs, didn't do alcohol, um, just trying to be as holy as I could be in my own ability. <laughs> and then if I did mess up, I would just cry and cry and tell God I was so sorry and then do it again the next day, you know, lie, especially lying. Um, well, that's how I lived for, I guess, 15 years. Um, I'm 28 now. Um, whenever I was 27, so last year, probably around this time, I realized that the only people I felt like that loved me were my husband and my mother and my kids, and that I had put a wall up around myself that nobody was allowed to get through because I was so offended and so defensive against everybody and so judgmental towards people you know because you know I was doing all these special things to be holy you know and they weren't <laughs> just really terrible and um, I started to not know what to do which is a good place to be Whenever you think that you have it figured out, it's not a good place. Whenever you come to the place where you finally admit that you don't know what you're doing, and you come to the place where you realize that you're not happy and you don't know how to fix it, that's when God can fix it. And so a couple months went by and I was just doing life, you know, trying to get by. And I wasn't a terrible person in those 15 years. I sang praise songs, I went to church, I did everything that I thought was right, um, but yet I was still miserable, like really miserable, because I would still do the things that people, that Christians did, and things that people that weren't Christians did, and then just feel really guilty about it, whereas the people who didn't have Jesus could do it without feeling guilty. <laughs> So it wasn't the greatest time, and I'm not saying that it was, you know, that I was a bad person. I was probably like a lot of people. Um, but then something happened last year where I bought my son something, and I lied to my husband about how much it cost, because I knew he would be upset about how much it cost. So I told that little lie, and as soon as I told it, for some reason, I felt so bad. And I just couldn't wait to get home and cry, for some reason. And it was so weird. It was like $5 I lied about. 
I told them it cost five dollars less than what it actually cost. Well, I got home and I just sobbed and sobbed and I told God that I would do anything to never feel like that again, that intense guilt and regret. And I completely repented and told him that I would never lie again. I would do absolutely anything to not feel that way. And that almost feels like whenever I actually got saved. Like whenever I decided that I'm never going to do anything to hurt the Holy Spirit ever again. And it was within a week of that, that my husband showed me a video of uh, Todd White. And uh, after listening to him, it suddenly opened and this whole new part of Christianity I didn't know existed. I didn't know that there were people going out there and laying hands on the sick. I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know that people were out there praying for people in public. I thought praying was something you did alone in bed at night for five minutes or something you did at church and God forbid that you pray out loud. You pray silently with your eyes closed. I had no idea that there were that it was possible for us to do the things that Jesus did. It was like I had never even I'd read the Bible before and I still didn't know that all these things existed and were for us today. And so after I listened to him it kind of dawned on me, "Oh, wait. This is Christianity?" I had no idea. I thought Christianity was just being a better person than the person that wasn't a Christian. Like, you got forgiven and got to go to heaven, and that was, that was good. Like, that was what Christianity was. But I didn't realize that Christians were supposed to live in freedom. That Christians were supposed to be free and full of joy and helping other people instead of judging them. I had no idea to be honest, and I've been in church for 27 years. And so after that, I just dove in head first. All the YouTube videos I could possibly watch, um, all the books, all the Bible every day, all day long. I was praying for six hours a night, just trying to figure out this whole secret place thing where you get alone with God in your bedroom and just talk to him like you would a regular person and not with the crying and begging and pleading for forgiveness of things that you did years ago. <laughs> and uh, I started watching a lot of Facebook Live videos um, and learning from them. I was writing things down. I was just soaking it all up for months, doing anything I possibly could to learn more. And that was all I wanted to do. I just... I didn't want anything else but to be close to God. And um, then in January, on January 3rd, oh, no, sorry, January 2nd, I was watching a live video on Facebook, and um, it was with uh, Brent Kelly, if anybody knows him, and uh, he asked if anybody needed prayer. And I said, I did. And uh, he prayed that I would have dreams and visions, which I didn't ask for, and I didn't really understand why he prayed that I would have dreams and visions, but I was like, okay, that's cool. And then he prayed that the Holy Spirit would just wreck me, and I was like, oh yeah, that that's something I want. I want to see what that's like. Well, anyway, I didn't feel anything, so I went to sleep, and I want to say around 2 in the morning, maybe 3, I was having a dream where he actually came in with a cardboard box and I was sitting at a table and he came up to the table with the cardboard box and he wasn't looking at me and he went to slam it down on the table but at the moment that the box would have hit the table I woke up from my dream and waves after wave after wave after wave of Holy Spirit was just washing over me and it was just the most amazing feeling. I was pinned to the bed. Like I couldn't move. And I just have never felt better in my entire life. Just wave after wave of awe and wonder. 
and I messaged him about it. And I was like, this is, this has never happened to me before. This is amazing. This has to be the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until like a week or two later, I realized that happened on January 3rd. It was two o'clock in the morning. So it was the next day. It was January 3rd. January 3rd is my birthday. So the Lord literally gave me a new birth on my birthday this year when I turned 28. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit through a dream, prayed for by somebody miles and miles away. I don't even know how many miles away over Facebook Live. And uh, anyway, just even a couple days later, I think it was three days later, I had another dream that Jesus was putting together a table and setting across, setting cups across it, and he filled a kettle full of tea. And he started pouring the tea back and forth over the cups until they were overflowing over the saucers and onto the table and onto the floor. And then I woke up again to the same thing, just wave after wave of Holy Spirit again. It, and since then, it's just been amazing. That's happened to me several times, um, especially in the car, because in the car I just let go. I don't know if anybody else is like that, <laughs> but in the car, I just, I can really be free. Even right now, I'm trying to be a little quiet because my kids are asleep, and at, if I'm around people, I still have problems letting go completely, but in the car, I have no issues just yelling, Holy Spirit, I want you so bad, <laughs> and so he's come and visited me there several times. Um, but also since January 3rd, I hear God speak to me. He speaks to me in dreams and visions, and I actually hear his voice in my heart. I'll ask him questions, and he'll respond with answers I didn't know. And I write them down because I don't know if anybody will believe me. <laughs> He's spoken to me words that came true. Um, one time I remember in February, I asked him to just tell me something, anything. And he told me the word Graham. I was like, I, I don't know what this is about. And my husband said, well, maybe he means like Franklin or Billy Graham. I was like, I don't know. A couple weeks later is when Billy Graham died. And it's just several things like that have happened where he speaks a word to me and a couple weeks later, it comes to pass. Um, just things like that, that they can't come from me. They, they can't, and I had no idea that any of this existed a year ago. I had no idea. A year ago, I was so hurt and so wrapped in scar tissue and so offended by everybody that I couldn't see. It, there was a veil over my eyes. Um, one of the things he spoke to me was I asked him to tell me something and he showed me a bird and a banana and I was like well I have no idea what that means so I started searching bird and banana and I came across this bird that had a beak that looked like a banana and I was like oh maybe that's it and as I was looking that up I realized that they had a nest that was shaped like a dome, like it was a dome shape, like a big circle, with a hole that they would go inside. It wasn't like a regular bowl bird's nest. It was a whole big nest with a top. And I just started bawling because nobody but my mom knows this. But whenever I was three, we were driving to church one day, and I was looking out the window and it was raining. And I saw some birds in their nest and I asked my mom, why don't birds build two nests and put one on top? That way they don't get wet. And she said, that is an excellent question. I don't know. <laughs> and she wrote it in my baby book because she thought it was just so observant for a three-year-old. And so I've never forgotten that. And then God tells me this. He answered the question from when I was three years old. That there are birds that have dome-shaped nests that protect them 
from the rain. I didn't know that. Maybe that's common knowledge. I didn't know that. Um, so I realized that God has been listening to you since you were born. He's been following you. He's been listening to you. He's ready to answer any of your questions. He wants to be your best friend. Um, you know, and back last fall, just right after all this, I started diving in really deep is whenever I just started going out and praying for people. I figured if, if Todd White could lay hands on a thousand people and not see them be healed, then I can certainly lay hands on people and not be so discouraged if nothing happens. So y'all don't, y'all don't know me that that's really extreme for me because I hated people like I hated them. I wanted to be a stay at home mom. So I never had to see people because all of, I felt like all they did was hurt me. I, you know, I see things on Facebook now, people posting shirts that say I hate people and things like that. And now that makes me cringe, but that was me. That was, that was so me. I just didn't, I was so terrified of people that they were going to hurt me, that they were mean and that all people were bad <laughs> is what I believed. And now I go up to people, I talk to people, I want to talk to people. I realize that they are beautiful, that they're made in Jesus' image, that he loves them. And so now I love them. And that from a year ago to now is crazy. Because a year ago, I didn't ever want to talk to another person besides my husband. Sometimes not even my mom. <laughs> but now I want to talk to everybody. Even just today, there was a guy outside the Farm Fresh who was just sitting there eating a bag of chips and drinking a soda. And uh, I got to talk to him, and he told me that he'd had six strokes and had lung cancer. And... A year ago, I would have just been like, hmm, I wonder why that guy's sitting out there. It's hot. He must be stupid sitting out in the sun like that. <laughs> it's crazy that we pass by these people and Jesus died for them too. They're worth the same amount of blood as me. They're worth the same amount of blood as you. It's just, it's crazy to look back on and think about how I thought I was a good person how I thought I was saved and I may have gone to heaven I don't know I like to think so but at the same time it feels like I wasn't even saved it doesn't feel like I was saved at all because I didn't look like Jesus but now I know what it means to be saved and I feel like my testimony gives hope to the people who might be sitting in the church pews doing the day-to-day -day thing where you go to church you pray a couple times a week, maybe even every day, you are in general a good person. You are a good person, you try your hardest to be a good person. You don't have these massive, you know, huge sins in your past, but you feel something's missing. You feel something's missing. It's because there is something missing. There's that personal relationship with Jesus where he becomes your best friend and you talk to him and he talks back to you and you you just get to know him alone in your room and you, he comes alive that's why it's called a personal relationship it's crazy you can do all the things that Jesus did you just have to try and you have to love you have to love him to love people and so if you're defensive and constantly on the offensive, it's because you know something's wrong. I just want to say that. <laughs> At least that's how I was. I was defensive and on the offensive because I didn't believe I was a good person. But now I know that Jesus lives in me. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just hope that helps somebody to know what's possible because the reason why I hadn't gone after this sooner was because I had no idea that any of this existed. I had no idea it was possible. I had no idea that God could talk to you. I had no idea that he could interact with you. I thought that my only hope was to get to heaven one day. And then that was it. You just had to make it through life, grit your teeth, 
and hope you made it through. And uh, so anyway, if anybody needs prayer, just go ahead and comment and uh, I could do that. But basically that's what I talked with my husband before posting this about what should my testimony video be and he said the where you are now compared to a year ago is crazy because a year ago you thought you were good and now you look back and you realize how far away you were from the Lord and I thought that I was fine I thought that I was a Christian I thought I was a good person I thought that everything was fine I just wasn't happy and I didn't know why well if you're not happy and you don't know why it's because you need to go deeper into Jesus and I just mean just give yourself up all your wants all anything that you want it's just give it all up it's it's all just selfish to think that you have to take care of yourself to think you know in a way of I, I mean that in a way of ways that God can take care of you, you say no God I don't need your help you it's selfish and it will keep you away from he'll back off and he won't come in so anyway I hope that helps somebody and I love y'all